It's finally out now, it's been a little over a day, and we've been able to be playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, as, you know, I've waited a little bit, like I said, it's been out for just over a day, which means anyone who kind of cares about spoilers and stuff like that has more than likely played it, so I do feel comfortable kind of now going in with my initial thoughts of the game. As kind of a quick summary for anyone who wants to watch 30 seconds of a video, Jill, you know, a little over, and then just leave, I really have enjoyed it so far. I've played about probably around 13 hours, uh, about 11 and a half on my own, and I am also doing a streaming series where I've done about an hour and a half on this very YouTube channel. Uh, more about that later. If you you know if you want to watch that, feel free to subscribe. I'd I'd appreciate it like a decent amount to be fair. So I'm kind of I'm going to be playing through the story twice, basically very closely together, which allows me to really ingest it. But what I've had so far is some of the best I think. It's some of the best we've had since Black Flag for this series specifically, but I do think it's some of the best we've had probably ever in certain aspects. To go over the combat, um, it does look janky as all hell when you watch it. It's not appealing to look at, but it does feel a lot better as you play it. It's a combat system designed, I think, more so for feeling good than looking good. Because it does admittedly look quite janky even at times Origins did, though Origins I think is the nicest looking of the RPG style of combat. Even that looked a bit janky at times and Valhalla's is kind of that up to the max. Things around the combat like Dismemberment is just nice little additions to see. The ability system I think is done very well this time around being entirely optional. The abilities that you kind of got through the skill trees in both Origins and Odyssey would in Odyssey, obviously, changing basically the entire point of the game, making it very spiritual, I guess, very fantasy, you know, pushing it more away from, like, a Game of Thrones fantasy level to more of a Lord of the Rings, with stuff like werewolves and cyclopses and fuck me, is Odyssey a shit game? <laughs> Just generally. Oh, and then, oh, we've got Odyssey 2 coming up next month. But that's besides the point. The ability system is again entirely optional and everything I've at least found so far, aside from an explosive arrow that's like a trip mine arrow or something, I don't know, I don't have footage of it at the moment, it's just stuff I've been playing in my own time. But aside from that, everything's a lot more grounded and feels a lot more Assassin's Creed and like it's something that is plausible, except that like movement sensor arrow thing, whatever the fuck it's called. Eivor, as a character, I do actually quite enjoy. I feel like Eivor's a very solid character, at least kind of, you know, fairly early on into the game. But, like I said, 11 hours in, in my personal playthrough, there's a lot of connection there. I do feel that the male voice acting and male Eivor is slightly better, simply because I think, at least for me personally, the voice acting for male Eivor just sounds better and is a lot more convincing. And is a lot more what I would expect a character to sound like, you know, Female Eivor, the voice acting, has had a lot of critique, to say the least. I even said it in my stream, that it sounds like she's been smoking like 50 packs a minute. And it does sound a bit like that. Obviously, I do understand what they're going for, and I do appreciate something like that. It's just not for me, and I, my personal playthrough, I'm playing as male Eivor, and it's very cool. Aside from that, Eivor, you know, the dialogue doesn't change. Eivor's the same person, regardless of the gender. Eivor's a very relatable character. He's not written in a weird, like, disconnected way as Cassandra or Alexios was. He feels very much a part of the world as well. Characters actually react to him and how he acts and how he treats them. Instead of just kind of going on with it and not caring what you do to other people, you can, your relationship with one character, at least thus far, can have an effect on your relationship with other characters. And, at least early on in the story, the choices seem to have meaning. You see, bit of a spoiler for this bit, but when you leave Norway for England, you have the option to take riches from Kjotve, the man who killed Eivor's father, that Eivor owned by right due to killing him, with you to England, but it's currently, technically, under ownership of the former King of Fjorn, um, Sturbian, I think, I believe that's his name. Should you choose to take them, he says to Eivor, at least through other things I had said, that he wished he left Eivor to the wolves and die as a small child, Whereas if you don't take the riches, you end on much better terms and he asks you to be a guiding kind of path for Sigurd, his son, and wishes you well, something he doesn't do if you leave with the riches. Stuff like that just makes it feel like 
choices do matter in this game and although they're not going to affect majorly the way the story goes like in Odyssey they are going to have an effect on character relationships with Eivor and how he reacts to people. Outside of that the modern day I've barely seen any of I've only really had the first portion to kind of digest and it's interesting to say the least what they're doing. Uh, Layla is in a very different position than when we left her in Odyssey she's having mood issues the staff is talking to her it's very interesting to see she's disheveled it seems like she's kind of losing her mind and her former team the one we saw or heard sorry in Odyssey isn't present obviously Victoria's dead but Instead, the other characters are replaced by Sean and Rebecca from the original games, which is just something I'd like to see. They've also gone back and kind of redconned some stuff for Desmond, which was cool, but I'll leave that. You can find that yourselves. Overall, I think so far, again, you know, 13 hours into what's probably going to be a very long game. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it, to be completely honest. It's very much better than I expected. There's a lot of jank to it. I do think, like, the cloak animation is, I think, a bit off. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Stealth is difficult to get used to, although it does work really well, and I do like how they've implemented it, being to do with kind of like distance and speed, stuff like that. It's very, it's a very cool way to take it compared to what it used to be. But outside of stuff like that, stuff that I'll save for a more kind of comprehensive review, uh, Valhalla is great. I'm loving it so far. Hopefully, it doesn't fall down at any point, but I don't think it will, to be completely honest. Uh, like I said at the top of this, I have been streaming, or I am streaming Valhalla on this channel. Episode 2 will be tomorrow. Uh, probably around 8.30 GMT. Uh, tonight, there's nothing for Valhalla. I am instead streaming Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, about 15 minutes after it launches. So, you know, wherever you are in the world, that's when I'm streaming it. Uh, about 15 minutes after it launches tonight, basically. Yeah, tonight. Or tomorrow morning, technically. It's fucking weird. I don't know. If you enjoyed this video, uh, I'd very much appreciate it if you left a like, subscribe, stuff like that. It'd mean a lot to me. Really, it would. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.